Welcome to another episode of the Tolkien Collector's Guide Haunted Scrolls. I'm Trotter and this episode is about the UK first edition of The Hobbit. It's an introduction to the first UK hardback printings of The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien, published between 1937 and 1946 in the UK. Additionally, I include a brief mention of what I think is the only translation of the first edition text of The Hobbit, Hompen, published in 1947. This article does not cover the 1938 US Hobbit, which is covered in a first edition hardback Hobbit US by Mr Underhill. Firstly, George Allen and Wynne samples and proofs of 1937. According to the article on TolkienBooks.net, 28 Traveller's samples were produced. These were probably the book binding and the first couple of chapters to give an example of what the book would look like to potential book buyers, and 21 paper bound copies, which were probably review copies. We next move on to the 1937 first impression with Tolkien's iconic dust jacket. The first printing was published on the 21st of September 1937 and 1,488 copies were printed. All the illustrations are black and white, including the Hill of Mirkwood. The dust jacket, which was illustrated by Tolkien, had a printed mistake. Charles Dodgson's name was spelt Dodgson with an E and this was hand corrected on all copies to remove the E. The Anglo-Saxons runes on the dust jacket when translated read as The Hobbit or There and Back Again, being the record of a year's journey made by Bilbo Baggins of Hobbiton, compiled from his memoirs by J.R.R. R. Tolkien and published by George Allen and Unwin Limited. The end paper maps were recoloured from Tolkien's original maps, which were redrawn in black and red instead of black and blue. You can see the original maps in The Art of the Hobbit by Hammond and Skull. This printing sold well, and George Allen Unwin reprinted in December 1937 for the second impression. Tolkien made suggestions for the dust jacket blur for this edition in TCG letter number 15, as he was not happy with the first impression blurb. However, the blurb was switched back for the third to fifth editions to the first impression blurb. I have included a link to the TCG forum post at the end of this article and the blurb textual changes. This edition includes some coloured illustrations, which were produced by Tolkien for possible inclusion in the Hewitt & Mifflin US edition. These are The Hill, Hobbiton Across the Water, the first printed black and white version was removed, Rivendell, The Fair Valley of Rivendell, Bilbo Comes to the Huts of the Raft Elves, The Dark Water Opened Suddenly Wide, Conversation with Smaug, O oh Smaug, the chiefest and greatest of all calamities. The illustrations are labelled with a second description, which looks like confusion at the printers. When Tolkien supplied the images, such as Bilbo Comes to the Huts and the Raft Elves, he included the illustration title as part of the illustration. But he also included a reference for the printer as to which page it should appear next to, in this case page 192, which features the text, The Dark River Open Suddenly Wide. The printers use this as the title of the illustration. It also appears on the list of illustrations at the start of the book. Apart from the hill, most of these colour illustrations did not appear in the UK editions again until the third edition in 1966. This impression is also the last time that the black and white illustration Merkel was included. 2,323 copies were printed, but 423 copies were destroyed on the 7th of November 1940 when a World War II bomb hit the Edmonton warehouse of Key and Whitting, George Allen Norwin's principal bookbinder. For the 1942 George Allen Norwin third impression, 1,509 copies were bound as a war economy standard book. The book club edition and the 1946 fourth impression were also printed to the same specifications. The need to conserve paper in Britain during World War II led to rationing from 1940, with publishers having their paper supplies cut to 60% of their pre-war usage. The Book Production War Economy Agreement of 1942 between the Ministry of Supply and the Publishers Association brought in codes governing the production of books with strict guidelines covering print sizes, words per page, blank pages and so on. Whilst it was a voluntary agreement, publishers who didn't join had their already rationed paper supply cut further. Despite the limitations placed on publishing during the war, demand for books grew, especially among the less wealthy echelons of society. Paper rationing in Britain continued until 1949. As can be seen from the size comparison between the 1937 and 1942 edition, the book was cut down in size. This also meant that the dust jacket was reduced in size, it appears the printers could not use the new size without losing some of the original jacket. The runes at the top and bottom of the dust jacket are no longer complete. They are also now printed onto dust jacket flaps instead of the front and rear dust jacket cover. The colour of the cloth binding was also changed from teal to green. The only colour illustrations to remain was the frontispiece, The Hill. 
The 1942 Foyle's Children's Book Club edition was printed at the same time as a George Allen and Winford impression. Foyle's Children's Book Club had their own paper ration supply and agreed with George Allen Unwin to print 3,000 copies of the Book Club edition along with the third impression. The Book Club edition retailed at 2 and 6, whilst the George Allen Unwin retailed at 7 and seven and sixpence. So these editions are considerably more affordable for the book buying public. No colour illustrations and no maps on the end papers were included, which must have caused some confusion for readers when reading this sentence on page 30. Look at the map at the beginning of this book and you will see there the runes in red. Bilbo on the dust jacket reminds me of P.G. Woodhouse Bertie Worcester and unsurprisingly Tolkien was not enamoured of the orange dust jacket. In TCG letter 223, Hopefully this quote will be November's revised edition of Tolkien's letters. Tolkien wrote, Surely the paper wasted on that hideous dust cover could have been better used. The other striking thing about this edition is that it really gives no clue in the dust jacket blurb as to what the book is about. Instead it details why you should only listen to BBC Radio for news. The final UK first edition of The Hobbit was the fourth impression. 4,032 copies were bound. This edition is seemingly identical to 1942 George Allen Unwin, third impression. This was the last UK printing of the first edition text of The Hobbit. 1947, Hompen, first impression. This is the only translation that I am aware of the first edition English text of The Hobbit into Swedish. I'd love to see an article on Swedish Hobbits from one of our members. Conclusion the Hobbit has sold over a hundred million copies. The UK first edition Hobbits are a great area to collect, but due to the large interest in early Tolkien are now very expensive to acquire. However, HarperCollins have released a facsimile edition of the 1937 George Allen Unwin first printed, which is a great way to see what the original edition looked like. If you are interested in the facsimiles, then please have a look at a separate article on the Tolkien Collector's Guide. Finally, a very big thank you to Lance Formation for providing images for dust jackets of the UK First Impression and the 1942 Foils Book Club Hobbit.